And today I'm going to be talking about data rights for film and automation. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about what it is, uh, why it's relevant, uh, why it's necessary, um, what organizations do today to fulfill the, the, the data rights fulfillment requests, and how we can tie some automation into that with Big ID. Uh, so I do have a few slides to get us started. Uh, I am going to keep the, uh, the slide deck brief. I do want to spend most of our time in the Big ID user interface. So just to kick things off, um, so you know, why, why, uh, why data rights fulfillment? Why is it a necessity? So it really comes down to uh, global privacy regulations. So things like GDPR for the EU, CCPA for California, uh, CDR, um, the list is gonna continue to grow. So th these are some of the uh, compliance regulations today, but we know these are gonna expand to other states and other countries. Um, one of the key elements of these regulations is for individuals, we need to be able to tell those individuals, those consumers, those employees, those contractors, we need to be able to tell those people what data we've collected on them, uh, what personal information have we collected on them. So, uh, you know, I as an individual, I go to a, a company's website, I fill out a credit application. Uh, they're going to store that information somewhere and maybe in a database, a SQL database, maybe in a network file share in a PDF. Um, or I fill out a job application. Again, maybe that's going to be stored um, in, a, in a SaaS application somewhere. So the data is going to be put in, in, in different locations. Um, but as, a, as an organization to comply with these regulations, I need to be able to say with, uh, with certainty that you know, for Sean Owens, this is the data I've collected on, on Sean. Um, I also need to be able to provide that information back to Sean. Uh, I also need to be able to uh, have a mechanism in place to allow Sean to request changes to the data I've collected on him. And then uh, I also need to be able to have uh, some way of having uh, the ability for Sean to request that deletion of that the, the data I've collected. So all these are elements of uh, these, these privacy regulations. Um, so most organizations today, what they use uh, is uh, usually it's a, man, it's a manual process. So they have a mechanism for somebody coming in and actually making, making a request uh, to, uh, to let them know what data they've collected on them. So maybe it's an email to a, to a company or it's a, it's a phone call, uh, which kicks off a manual process, maybe a uh, a survey of some sort, a spreadsheet. Um, you know, maybe there's some data classification that's that's in place to classify information using regular expressions. Um, the the point is here that uh, you know there's not much automation in the overall process in the data discovery uh, process, and also the the gathering of the information, and and it's also prone to. Uh, to, to human error because you know there's a lot of steps in the process that 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 is not automated. Um, so over here on the right, um, the, the the main thing I'm going to be talking about today is automation and scalability of uh, data rights fulfillment. Um, you know, being able to tell an individual what data we've collected on them, and you know, having a level of certainty to know that. You know, the, what I'm telling them is, is absolutely everything that I've collected on them. Um, so, again, we need to go beyond just regular expressions when we're looking at data discovery. We need to be, be able to start to introduce some automation into the process for the data collection and the reporting back to the, the individual on that data. Um, so, if you remember, remember, remember from our last session, the, the, the discovery in depth session which I did last week. Uh, if you haven't seen it, please feel free to, to check that out. Um, but at the heart of, of the Big ID platform is really the, what we call the four Cs. Um, and it's really about uh, data discovery. It's, it's discovery in depth. So, and there's four elements, there's four Cs. Um, and I'll just talk about these very briefly. So there's the catalog. So there's a, an automated catalog or inventory of all the information in your environment. Um, and it doesn't matter where that data sits, if it's in SQL DBs, Oracle databases, network file shares, uh, if it's in SaaS applications, maybe uh, Salesforce, if it's data in motion like Kinesis, 
Um, it doesn't really matter where it says Big ID has uh, most likely a connector to connect into that data source and, uh, and do, uh, do a scan. Um, the other thing that we do too, the second C here, classify. So cl data classification, very important, obviously when we're, we're going out, we're doing data discovery. We need to be able to find uh, uh, patterns. So social security, social security numbers, credit card numbers, we can do that with regular expressions. However, that method of classification by itself is not sufficient. Um, and it's also prone to false positives, um, which are a bad thing, obviously, right? Um, so we need to be able to employ uh, some, some more sophisticated mechanisms for data discovery, like natural language processing, like name entity recognition. Uh, not to use too many buzzwords, but what we're doing is, is some deep learning on the data. We're going far and above just uh, regular expressions to look for more sensitive information and to find that sensitive information more accurately. Um, and then the third C here, cluster analysis. So we also look at uh, data from a uh, similarity perspective. So, you know, where do the financial documents sit? Where are the medical forms? Um, how similar are these different documents that we have within the, within the environment? We can cluster them together or group them together so, you, so that you can see, you know, where these different uh, unstructured data types live. Um, so you can see, you know, where you have hotspots, say, of, of sensitive information. Um, you can see where you have duplicate data or redundant data. Uh, if you're doing a, a migration, this can be particularly useful to, so that you migrate only the most recent copy of a document, as an example. Um, the last C here, correlation. So finding information is one thing. Uh, tying it to an individual is quite another. So Big ID uh, implements a, uh, a very sophisticated mechanism, a patented mechanism, um, unlike really, it's, it's unlike any other vendor, uh, to be able to correlate or associate information back to an individual. So I can go into all these different data sources that we have out there, and I can say, I found a social security number, I found hair color, eye color, race, religion, and it belongs to Sean. Um, so correlation is really the key to um, untying or, or, or finding data that would otherwise not be uh, identifiable. So again, data discovery is where it all starts. You can't do anything else unless you have the data discovery portion down. Um, once the data, data discovery is done, then what Big ID can do is start to utilize some apps that sit on top of our platform to take action. Um, and the, the application I'll, I'll talk about today falls under the privacy app section. Uh, but you can see here that there's, there's really four sections. So there's, there's also protection apps, there's perspective, and then there's some utilities. Um, we'll probably be diving into these in other sessions. Um, today, I'm just going to focus on data rights fulfillment automation. Um, and uh, that's where we will we'll stay for today, really in the data privacy, uh, privacy space. So I'm going to talk about um, data rights automation. Um, so managing those requests as they come in from, in, from individuals, from consumers, from employees, from contractors, um, whomever we have collected data on. So managing those requests, um, being able to um, automate some of the things that we did uh, previously in a, in a manual fashion. And OK, here we go. So I'm going to log into Big ID. So when I log in, I'm greeted with our dashboard. Uh, we can see here, just to refresh uh, your memory, um, from a Big ID perspective, we have 19 different data sources that we have connected. Uh, we have connectors for all different types of data sources. Uh, they're all here. Um, they're all API based, so there's no agents to install. So I've connected to uh, you know, all these different data sources that I have within my environment. And I've done uh, data classification, and I've found things like objects. So an object can be an entry in a, in a, in a database table. Uh, it could be um, a Word file sitting out on a file share. Um, and then we found attributes within those, uh, within, within those objects. Um, and then we also have entities. So an entity is really, uh, it's a person. So and Big ID has done correlation of those entities back to 
the findings within the data that we have out there. So again, we're using the four C's that we have here for that deep data discovery and for the and for the correlation that we've that we've done. So what I'm going to focus on focusing on today is the, within the app tray here. I'm going to open up data rights fulfillment. And so Big ID has done all the hard work for going out and looking for information uh, that we have out in all these different data sources. And we've done the correlation of that information back to an individual. So what that means is that we can start now to pull information for an individual out of the system, out of Big ID. Um, so we can take that action. Um, so I can put in Benjamin Terry Young. So I'm going to use B uh, Benjamin as an example. I can put in his name and I can do a search. Uh, and we can see that I pulled up one, uh, one, uh, one entry. Um, I can click on the, the unique ID, verify that this is the correct Benjamin Terry Young in case I have multiples. And validate this is, this is the correct Benjamin and I can go ahead and submit the request. What this, what this is going to do is actually it's going to trigger a real-time uh, scan of all the different data sources that I have out there that contain information for Benjamin. So I've already created this map of where the information for Benjamin lives. Now I can go ahead and retrieve that data. Um, it went into the pending request here for, for a moment, and then it went ahead and completed. Um, if I go ahead and look, I can see that 16 data sources essentially were, were scanned. Um, and what we've done is we've pulled back in report form some information from the various systems uh, that have information about Benjamin. Uh, I'm going to show the full report here. This is more for internal audiences because it contains absolutely everything. Uh, it's all the findings basically um, that we've that we've we found that are related to to Benjamin Terry Young. So it's things like um, date of birth, gender, uh, a patient reference number, 